Bruce Ashford was talking about Christian solutions and how we can um, better um, do better political involvement. And so one of the things he was talking about, and you talk about in your book as well, the the principle of subsidiarity. Exactly. Uh, affirming right. civil society and sphere sovereignty. We did an episode on sphere sovereignty. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, with uh, Joe Boot. Oh, yes, yes. That's yes, nice. yes. <laughs> we did that with Joe yes. Boot. Uh, okay. that was, that, actually, that, that episode was well received. Great. Um, because yeah. these were these were kind of new ideas to our listeners. And and so he goes on to say about you, um, Bruce Ashford, he says that as Coises does in the last several chapters of Political Visions and Illusions, we should work together to construct a non-ideological alternative for Christians who wish to recognize God's sovereignty over the nation and draw upon our Christianity to work for the common good. That's right, yes. Yeah, can, you, can you unpack right, that for yeah. us? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And and I think we need to be careful because, I, you know, in, in using that, I'm not simply talking about transforming society. You know, I'm, I'm talking about recognizing the realities of our society as they current exist, currently exist. Doesn't mean that reform is off the, is off the table. No, but, but, you know, whether we're talking about conserving or reforming, which I think have to go together in some fashion, that we need to be aware that our societies are diverse. There's a diversity of structures. I, I, have this term that I use called societal pluriformity, or the pluriformity of authorities, as I express it in my second book, We Answer to Another. Uh, you know, the pluriformity of, of authorities, it means that, there's, that, that we are embedded in a variety of communities. And we're not just individuals, floating individuals, entering into market relations or contractual relations with people, but we are embedded in a whole variety of communities. And that's for the better, it's, it's, for, it's for the best. It means that if we talk about if we talk about our calling as, as as Christians, some people think you know, especially young people. If if I talk to them about their callings, they think I'm talking about their careers, about their work life. That's only a small part of our total calling as as those who are created in God's image. So my calling as a, as a human being is. Um, you know, as 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 an author, at at one time it was as a teacher. I'm still doing teaching, but mostly it's online and is taking place um, around the world now. Um, I'm a, I'm a husband to my wife. That's that's a calling. I'm a I'm a father to my daughter. That is a calling. I'm a, I'm a son to my to my my elderly mother. That that's a calling. They're all. I'm, I'm a member of my church, and I have a calling with respect to my church congregation as well. So in what might be called a mature, differentiated society, uh, we recognize that no one institution has the final say. And let me repeat that again because I think that's very important. No one institution has the final say. Now we sometimes think that, oh, well, maybe the state does, maybe government does, but it doesn't, only within its particular sphere. Now right now with this pandemic, we're in some uh, something of an extraordinary um, period of time because governments are taking uh, measures that they would not otherwise take if there were not some kind of an emergency. So during the two world wars, governments took um, took uh, um, they took uh, 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 emergency powers that they could not have taken during during peacetime. Uh, you know, and and that's basically the way that it has to be. Right now, governments are taking, imposing quarantines, uh, lockdowns, and so forth, and that's to try to keep the, the public safe. Once the emergency is passed, if government tries to hold on to those powers, then we know that, that, that something is amiss. Then we know that, it, that, it, that it's, it's going too far. Mm -hmm. And and I think some people would claim that we're in that place now, but uh, some people do claim that, yes. That it is a different conversation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, you use the term subsidiarity, and you define it as this in your book. Uh, subsi subsidiarity thus means that tasks are to be fulfilled by the lowest element in social hierarchy. And only when this proves impossible is a higher community, such as the state, justified in stepping in and offering assistance. Uh, once matters are set right, however, the higher community must then withdraw. Subsidiarity was deemed important for the maintaining a healthy, for maintaining a healthy social order in which all parts may retain their vitality and initiative over against the threat of an om omnipotent 
or om omnicompetent, omnicompetent, omnicompetent state. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And and let me say a few words about subsidiarity because it's a, it's a term that comes out of Catholic social teachings, beginning especially with Pope Leo the Thirteenth, who was on the the papal throne between um, 1878 and I believe it was 1902 or 1903, and he um, produced a body of of Papal encyclicals. These are pastoral letters that are published by the popes down through the down through the centuries, and if taken together, um, they form a body of what what is called come to be called Catholic social teachings, drawing on the traditions of the Church, drawing on Thomas Aquinas uh, to some degree, Aristotle going back um, back back uh, twenty five hundred years ago, and uh, and and it presupposes a hierarchical notion of society. So with God at the top. There is the institutional church um, uh, underneath God. There is the state. Uh, but no, below the state, you have certain intermediary communities or mediating structures. Below that, mm -hmm. you have individuals. And so in that kind of a hierarchical arrangement, subsidiarity is meant to try to uh, defend the lower levels against the higher levels uh, 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 interfering uh, too much in, in their lives. So subsidiarity is something that, that was tailor-made for, for Catholic social principles. Now, I, I, do you want me to talk about sphere sovereignty? Because that, that presupposes a somewhat different, um, uh, a different social ontology, if, if you will. But, uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, okay. So sphere sovereignty, going back to Abraham Kuyper. Abraham Kuyper was the, uh, the Dutch polymath uh, you know, he was a, he was an academic. He was a pastor. He was a, a university um, administrator. He was a, he was prime minister of the Netherlands between 1901 and 1905. He was born in 1837 and died in in 1920, just one 100 years ago, um, this month, I believe. And um, and and he came up with this notion of in Dutch of souveraineteit in eigen kring, or or sovereignty in its own sphere, often and somewhat terribly inelegantly shortened to sphere sovereignty. Um, you know, it's not a term that speaks to, uh, to English speakers in, in any way, but it, it presupposes a less hierarchical social ontology. So the idea is that all of these communities in which we find ourselves embedded, and also we as individuals relate directly to God, receiving our authority directly from God himself. And God has delegated uh, a certain degree of his authority to all of these agents that we find in society. So to schools, to, to states, to, to, to church congregations, to families, to marriages, to uh, indeed to individuals, to, uh, to a, a whole variety of other kinds of communities, business enterprises, labor unions, and the like, uh, which, which have an important role to play, all of which have important roles to play in a smoothly functioning society. And so sphere sovereignty, uh, it, it doesn't mean that there are hard and fast walls between the different spheres of society, because in reality, they are all mixed together in some, in some way. And each of us as an individual is involved in a variety of overlapping communities. But it does mean that uh, a business enterprise uh, should be following uh, the what, what should we say, the created, creational structure for a business enterprise. And that's to provide a service to the public uh, in exchange for, for, uh, for fair compensation, usually determined by, by some kind of value that's determined in the market. Um, you know, a school has a task to educate children. Uh, government has the responsibility to do public justice. And public justice doesn't mean the government does everything. It means that it, um, it, no, yeah, I mean that that itself. If if government becomes totalitarian, then it's 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 egregiously violating justice. And so, I, uh, under this notion of sphere sovereignty, government recognizes that all of these other communities have their legitimate spheres of authority that um, governing authorities ought not. Please subscribe and hit the bell to stay up to date. If you liked or disliked the snippet. Give it a like and share your two cents with us in the comment section. And remember, six cents makes change.